if Florida wins this game and gains some confidence, I mean, they have a pretty good path to have a very good record this year. I mean, they do play Georgia, which is going to be a tough game. But, like, LSU and Tennessee, like, we all know how SEC games go, how hard LSU and Florida play. Like, that could be a trap game. And then Tennessee. Yeah. Like, and then Tennessee, which is, like, a game that I want to talk about in a little bit. But, like, Florida has a shot to have a very good record if they end up upsetting Utah and gaining that confidence. All about the Balls Podcast! With Mark Davis, Chris Gemeinhart, Luke Rule, and Nick the Doc Skirkowitz. Welcome to All About the Balls Podcast. I'm Mark Davis, joined alongside Chris Gemeinhart, Luke Rule and Nick the Doc Skirkwins, and it is time that we finally have a week one preview of college football. Yes, there was zero week last week, but this is where the real lights are out there now. The fucking show starting. Chris, how are you feeling heading into college football? I'm t- Mark, I'm fucking pumped. I leave tomorrow night to go down to Louisiana. Unfortunately, the game's not there. It's in Orlando, but hey, <laughs> we're going to be fucking out there. Drinking fuck that one up. Hey, watching it. Hey. Eating crawfish? No, not yet. It's out of season, but out of season. Okay. We'll, we'll be we'll be throwing back some fucking daiquiris, you know, some shrimp pole boys. We'll be getting oh, it yeah. out. Luke, how are you feeling, dude? You have UCF tomorrow. Big game. The game of the week. UCF hosting Kent yeah. State, dude. Yeah. Open it up. Big twelve game. First time in the Big Twelve for the UCF. So I think they're gonna come out and put on a show out under the lights in Orlando. They two, two big games unis. in Orlando this weekend. What's that? They rocking some good unis tomorrow. Yeah, they're going. Uh, cro- I mean, gold gold helmets, all black pants, jerseys. Yeah, they they pretty good. New jerseys Great. this year. Go ahead New and put an asterisk helmets. on that game too. Oh yeah, that's the championship of the game of the year. So like, whoever wins this is the national champions already. So and yeah. good luck, and folks. <laughs> if you open up ESPN and look at fucking college scores, make sure you filter to all CF. B teams because you won't find them on top 25. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. There you go. Not yet. Not yet. Sorry, sorry. Hey, Doc. This is the first, first time in the Big 12. So let, let them get a couple of Big 12 wins in. Then they'll, they'll be up on their, on their fucking top 25. Well, you, it depends on who you play. You know, if you're playing some of the relevant teams, <laughs> yeah. you might have to well, wait you, a little longer you, than two games. You, you win games, you get ranked. Yeah. When you're big, yeah. when you're a big school. But yeah, Doc, how are you doing? Heading into, I mean, you guys, like Chris said, big game this weekend, but how are you feeling going to college week one, man? Fucking great, dude. Absolutely amazing. So excited to see my Seminoles get back on the field. So excited for just college football, baby. Ready to go. Yes, sir. Fuck yeah. Is, yes, sir. Is, is Jameis going to go to that game and eat some W's or what? Oh, he's eating dubs all day long, baby. That man is snacking on dubs. Yeah, he's a W master. He he knows how to eat those dubs, especially in college. But NFL and those crab so legs. Hey, oh. here, yeah. I mean, hey, he, he, he wasn't they were giving to him. What? Nil wasn't there back in the day, you know. He was just trying to survive, man. Just yeah. Man survive just wanted there. some crabby legs, dude. Well, the cashier let him go too, like the clerk boy, or whatever. That he let him they, fucking like leave it. It wasn't like he did. They, they, they didn't gave know it to him. Too. He's yeah. like, fuck it, Jameis. Get us a dub. Get us a dub in the champy, and and we're good, dude. He did yeah, get to the ship. Boys, it, like I said, we'll start off hot. You know, first game, the, probably the first biggest game of the year. Sorry, if Luke, you guys aren't the biggest game. Honestly, it is LSU going to Orlando. Biggest, biggest game tomorrow. I wouldn't even say that. There's another Florida team that has a, has a big game, but we'll mention that yeah, a little yeah. bit probably. But Playing it I, actually wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that UCF is the biggest game at any point in this season. UCF probably has as good a chance yeah. of winning the, the, the Natty you know as the Ravens you know, do was, winning the Super Bowl. I can't wait to oh, watch God. fucking Florida State get blown out. <laughs> there we go. Go Tigers. <laughs> Mark, might, Luke, Luke, I'm going to say They might, but we're still going to be ranked. <laughs> so, hey, hey Luke's just going to be guy wearing the year. Is there, is, there, is there – I have a question. Um, I, I, maybe, can maybe you the Patrick viewers, Queen? I have, I have a question. Oh. Maybe the viewers can fucking chip in on this one too. Does Florida State have an asterisk next to their national championship? 
I don't know, but your coach used to allow cheating, you know, in the classroom, and yeah. then he got some wins taken from him. That's okay, so. though. That's okay, though. Did did Florida State actually win a championship, or did they just win a bowl game that meant nothing, and they just claimed national champions? I don't know. That was too long ago for me to remember. Maybe yeah, but hey. No, they fucking steamrolled Notre Dame. Well, hey, let's, let's derail a little bit, because let's talk LSU, Florida State. Luke, I know you have Florida State in the playoffs, so if that happens, they get blown out. This might actually put a, a big halt to that chance or that playoff potential. Uh, but Chris, Doc, this is your your guys' game. You have Jane Daniels and the LSU Tigers traveling to Orlando to face uh, Jordan Travis and the Florida State Seminoles. How pumped up are you guys? Who do you think is going to win this game? What are you guys looking forward to as well? Uh, Doc, I am, go ahead. You start it off. I am absolutely fucking pumped. Um, I'm not going to lie. I think LSU is going to take this one. Uh, I'm just hoping that it's not a blowout. LSU is a strong team. Um, FSU bringing a lot of starters back. FSU bringing some heat. Um, I think we got like the number one, number one or two wide receiver in the class this year. So um, I'm excited to see what the team's going to do. I'm, I'm shocked we did last year. I don't quite think that we are ready to uh, compete like that yet, but uh, should make for a good game either way. I think LSU is going to win, but. You know, we'll see close, what happens. But close game, probably. Yeah. I'm hoping close. I'm hoping close. Well, I mean, Spread Jordan Travis two, spreads 2.5 right now. Who, who's the LSU. favorite? Okay, LSU. 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 LSU is like 65 or 60, 65, 35, I think. Yeah, you know Vegas Jordan has Travis 2.5 right now. You know Jordan's going to be coming out trying to sling the ball because this is his final year in college. He's a six-year player, so this is it for him. He's got to come out here and make a name for himself. He already has, but, like, you know, make a bigger name for himself, especially with the – the draft for him coming up next year. So I don't know. I'm excited for this game. I think it's game of the week. I know there were some boo-boos that LSU had last year on special teams, kind of gave the game up last year. If they can clean that up, I don't know. Jane, I think uh, Daniels can play pretty good. It's LSU's defense. They're, they're fucking loaded as always. Maybe we'll see if they can get the, the passing game more involved. I know you guys are usually a running team, but I'm excited, Chris. Really am. Go Tigers. Yeah, I mean, go Tigers. I mean, this is a week one game coming out. So unlike last year, FSU didn't have a week zero game. So, I mean, both of these teams are going in. And hey, this is probably going to be a wobbly game in the very beginning. Probably going to be a little messy on both sides of the ball. But hey, I'm fucking excited for it. I mean, this is the second year with Brian Kelly, Matt House over there on the defensive side. And hey, what Matt House did last year, I mean, taking seven freshmen on that defensive side, he moved LSU 10th to 5th in scoring defense. Great for him. I mean, the biggest question I have going into the season is our DBs. I mean, we don't have much depth, and the players we do have are all transfers. I mean, we have Alexander. We have Chestnut. We have Denver Harris, if he even plays tomorrow or, or Sunday, I mean, or not. And then, I mean, we took a big loss already. I mean, Mason Smith, NCAA wants to pull some bullshit, suspend him for a game. He got injured last game. When we played FSU week one, I mean, he's a beast on the D-line, but I think LSU definitely has the D-line locked down. I'm excited. The offensive line, I mean, majority of the offensive line last year, all true freshmen in the SEC, they held their own. So, I mean, I'm excited for it. I mean, the corners are going to get some work in. And then FSU defensively, I mean, hey, they last year fourth in passing given up, but 75th in rushing yards given up. So I can see LSU coming out there and trying to run the ball down, see if they can get some yards down there. I, I, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm nervous as Sounds fuck. Like You're going to have to to avoid Jared Verse. Well, Luke, yeah, I mean, you, you, guys anything big? you guys do anything big for the game? I know Cindy's a Florida State fan, so you guys got a big no. party coming up or something? No, I don't know. I got uh, my mom and sister coming up this weekend, so – so I don't really have the plans. I actually have them coming in tomorrow night. So we'll, we'll go figure out something to do uh, Sunday and Thursday. You better tell them it's a Seminole night. You better hey. tell them it's Florida State night. I'm LSU. watching on my phone either way. LSU I'll, covers. I'll watch it some way. LSU covers, Chris? Take. Yep. Take yeah, I mean, that's just one of the big games. I mean, oh, I mean, I want to say big. I mean, that's the, that's the big game. I would say that's the, the only big No, game. no, that's the – that. This honestly is the biggest game week so one, definitely. Matchup, isn't it? Well, it's not even the only ranked matchup, but like this Top is definitely here. going this is definitely gonna define LSU or FSU <laughs> because whoever loses this is this game, they may have a chance in the playoffs, but like you have to play the rest of the season fucking perfect. Fucking lights really, out. Yeah. 
Yeah, like and so. like for for FSU, they have an easier time not shitting on y'all's like schedule or whatnot. But like Clemson would be the hardest team y'all have to face again. I mean LSU, we have to play fucking Alabama. Then we have to beat Georgia in the SEC championship. So I mean LSU has a harder road ahead of them if they do lose this game. Then FSU. Uh, I think it's what killed killed LSU season last year is that loss week one for them. I mean, what killed them was the fucking trap game in Texas A&M. Yeah, that was really the game. I, I think I think y'all gave up on that game. Yeah, you know, probably. <laughs> I mean, they were, like, they were like, they're like, fuck. Kyle Field was too loud, too big. Then they, had a, they they knew they had to play Georgia next week and fucking pretty much their backyard too. So, uh but hey, I mean, that's like you said, it's the biggest game. I mean, there's other storylines out there. Like we have prime time finally making his debut in the Power Five. <laughs> With Colorado, I know Luke was talking about that. He said that's probably an upset, uh, upset of the week possibly. And I was telling you, Chris, TCU's quarterback is actually the quarterback that was supposed to start last year. He got hurt against Colorado. Um, he's, a, he's a transfer out of Oklahoma, Chandler Morris. So they said he's actually better than Duggan, but Duggan just didn't look back. I mean, you, they rode with the high hand all year. So I don't know. I, I, it's, it's time, though, for prime time. You know, I think that's going to be the, one of the biggest talks Sunday morning or Saturday morning when college game day is rolling. And, the, and yeah. the big noon, too. Social media is going to go the fuck off if primetime wins this opening game oh against TCU. God. Yeah, I think – I mean, TCU regresses. Are they good enough to be able to reload like some of these Power 5 teams do, like Alabama and Georgia and stuff? I don't know. We'll have to see. They did lose a lot of key players, quarterback, wide receivers, running backs. Can their offense step it up? And then Colorado, I mean, they improved, but I don't think Colorado improved enough to beat TCU that regressed. Well, I, I think the biggest question mark is nobody knows how Colorado is going to play. Like, they have pretty much an entirely yeah. new team. What They had, what, 50-plus transfers coming in? Plus and, a lot of guys that left, and a lot of guys yeah. that left, too. Yeah, well, you saw the guys that left. They only had fucking <laughs> one win last year, so it's not like yeah, they, so. they lost a bunch of talent. So... I don't know. I think also, big question mark on how, how well that team's going to play. You saw what Dion did at Jackson State. He turned that team around pretty pretty quickly. So we'll see if he can do it at a, a Power 5 school. But the, well, the let's skill, be honest. I mean, the skill but, level that Dion played against when he was at Jackson State is completely different than what he's about to play with now. Like, yeah, he's yes, playing he OTCU in, at a week one at Jackson State. Yeah. Yes, he brought in a lot of talent. But can that talent go against what they're about to go against right now? Oh yeah. I mean, I, do you, I mean, do you guys think he wears a cowboy hat though too? And then he's rocking the cowboy should. hat Saturday. I don't oh, know probably. how you wear the cowboy hat with a fucking headset on. He's gonna wear a fucking cowboy hat That's and his fucking golf. It's cart gonna be. It's he, gonna yeah. be fucking custom true, modded, yeah. and he's gonna have his boot on with his golf cart, and he's gonna be ready to go. Um, no, I think it's going to be an interesting match. I mean, it's going to be a testament to to uh, prime times coaching. Um, but I think, honestly, I mean, you're talking 50-plus new players on this team. Chemistry is still a thing that they're working through. I don't think it's something that's going to happen overnight. Um, I think this is going to be like a rebuild year for Colorado. I think next year is when they might take off. But I think TCU is still going to prevail. I mean, as far as reloading talent, I think that that's – I mean, it's something that they've done year after year. They've continued to stay strong. So I have no doubt that, you know, they've got as much as they lost in, in the last season. I've got no doubt that they've got the guys that come in and back them up um, and take over now. So I'm still taking TCU over Colorado, especially in TCU. I'm taking I'm taking them over Colorado. Well, cool. I, I think I think if Colorado doesn't get blown out, I think it's a win for them, like in their books. As long as they don't get blown out, I think Dion's on the right path. Right. Yeah. And I mean, like, real quick, like switching gears, talking about talent. I mean, I know it's only week – it was week zero going into week one. But, I mean, I already have a little, like, Heisman watch. I don't know if you – I know we watch a little bit of the Notre Dame game. But Sam fucking Hartman, hey, people need to put his name down because fucking senior out of North Carolina, I mean, the man went 19 for 23 with 251 yards and four touchdowns. Pretty much the same stats as yeah. Caleb Williams. And, Literally the same stats, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, like, yeah, granted, they did go against fucking Navy, but Caleb Williams also went against, what was it, San Antonio State or some shit? San, San Jose, Jose State, State. And they're still, they're, they're still, they're a far step above Navy. It got, 
And San Jose Odds. State plays another ranked team this week too. Like, just God bless their souls, man. They can't catch a break. I mean, I was uh, during that USC game before USC ran away. I mean, if I was a fucking Trojan, I'd be worried about that defense. Because once you play well, play some guys that can stay in the game, they're going to be struggling. That's Definitely the Lincoln a lot Riley. of question marks watching that defense. Well, that's the Lincoln Riley like history of a coaching for him. So same way in Oklahoma. I mean. He just never had a defense there, really. I mean, they had they had talented players, but they just never never seemed to to work out on the actual field. They were allowing up mega points. That's why guys like Baker and Kyler Murray and guys like that they had to put up like forty plus points every single week. It seemed like. And I think Caleb Williams is gonna have to do the exact same fucking thing this year. Oh yeah, I agree. Uh, but Doc, you mentioned real quick. Just to rewind a little bit, you mentioned Colorado. You know. Uh, maybe taking off next year, good luck to them because they're fucking joining UCF's fucking conference, and that's going to be UCF's kingdom. Like, when when it's all said and done next year, 2024 Big 12 champs, UCF. Yeah. So, I don't think Colorado's going to have a chance there, man. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them. I, I don't think UCF's ever going to have a chance to to make the playoffs, and Colorado is, is a clear step above UCF. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think Colorado I mean, could get steamrolled by by fucking TCU and then come in and steamroll UCF. I don't know. Recently, UCF I would say has had a better track better track record than Colorado has. That's for sure. Yeah, Co- Colorado Colorado really had one win. They had yeah, one win mean, last year. Yeah, just because you're in the Pac-12, just because you're in a Power Five doesn't mean like I guarantee UCF could beat like Vanderbilt if they really wanted to. Uh, I'm sorry. Like oh, I mean, Mizzou, Mizzou wasn't like Mizzou wasn't horrible last year. They were competitive no. as well last year too. They were. They, they were, were competing. They, they pushed they Georgia. Competed. Yeah, they pushed Georgia a little bit. Georgia had to take the. That's what I wanted to say. I, I was trying. I was about to say Alabama, but it was Georgia they played, and that game yeah. was close until the fourth quarter, and then Georgia just yeah until the fourth. Pulled away. Yeah. But play Georgia tough three, three three tough quarters. You played them better than TCU did. Like so, yeah. That's that's saying no, a it's lot. definitely it's definitely going to be a wake up call for Colorado. They're going into the Big Twelve. I mean the the talent in that league with Oklahoma State with Baylor. I mean it's definitely going to be an eye opener. Um, all jokes aside, I mean I, I'm not saying Colorado's going to shit on fucking UCF, right? Um, it seems like the Big 12 has finally taken steps to to improve that conference and become stronger. Um, nice to see UCF get into a Power Five conference, and and they have shown that they're they have shown their worth. They they've shown that they deserve to be in the talks, right? So it's nice to see them into the into the Big 12 and and have a chance to to move. So uh, excited to see what's going to come. I think yeah, it's going like, to be hard though. I think like it's going to be hard though for the teams in the Big 12, like especially the Texas teams that are still remaining there, to recruit because. A lot of those boys now in Texas, they're going to want to go to the SEC. That's not being biased because I'm going to SEC. I, I'll say that truthfully. If no, that's A&M true was diff- because the draft A- result A- of the was, SEC is far higher than anything else. And you can see A&M recruits well, but they still have a hard time recruiting sometimes against Texas and Oklahoma because of the name. Texas and OU are just bigger names in general than A&M. But when Texas and Oklahoma join A&M in the SEC, it's going to be hard for Baylor, TCU, and Texas Tech and guys like that to recruit at a higher level just because – the boys are going. The kids are going to play in the SEC essentially, like more money, but more opportunity for like future, you know, career and all that stuff. So, and that's nothing against Big well, Twelve anymore. It's just that's just the truth. We're we're going to see what happens with prime time. I mean, we know obviously with the transfer portal what he's able to do and and the and the impact that he has on recruiting. So we'll see what what happens when it, you know, his first season in the Big Twelve and what he can what he can bring to the table. I mean, if he is. The, the the guy that they're making him out to be, you know, not making him out to be. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen it because of the transfer portal. So if he's able to to secure talent and get transfers and all this other stuff, and there's always going to be guys transferring out of the SEC because they're not getting starts. New five star recruits are coming into teams like Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, you know, everything, Texas, Oklahoma. So when guys are transferring out, they need a home to go to, and then they can go to the Big Twelve where they may not have gotten a chance in the SEC and absolutely shine. And that's UCF. That's fucking Colorado. That's anywhere in the Big Twelve that. Like you said, they're taking a hit on recruiting, but if they're going to find what they need in in JUCO or or the power um, the transfers out of the out of other Power Five conferences, I mean, hey, it's up for grabs. Yeah, well, all these JUCO guys go underrated too, but you see, they make the NFL. Okay. Oh, them of our, they're dirty, dude. Uh, they're, ooh, 
Ooh. Cam started in the SEC and then had problems okay. and then went to JUCO for like pretty much to redeem himself. Josh, Josh and Allen went back to the SEC. Like Josh Allen went so. to JUCO. Well, this, yes, is, no, this is another Allen. reason why guys go JUCO. Guys go JUCO for academic, yeah. for for law violations. I mean, a number of reasons why guy goes but, why see, guys go JUCO, between, but they rebuild. The difference between Josh Allen and Cam Newton was Josh Allen went there because no one gave him an opportunity. Cam had a chance, and UF blew it, and then went to JUCO, and then went to Auburn, yeah. another SEC school, won a championship yeah. and a Heisman. Again, it was before NIL deals, and he was just trying to make some money. Yeah, I mean, definitely was trying to make some money. <laughs> steal, steal some laptops. Hey, but Luke, I mean, Luke, you have any, I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, a fucking free show here. Like, you got anything you're looking at? I know, I know. like I said, I know UCF's playing. Uh, Texas is playing this week. I mean, both our kind of games are just whatever kind of game. We're playing Rice, yeah. and you're, you're playing Kent State. But anything else on the docket that you're looking at? Yeah, kind of interested to see how Florida plays. Uh, they're playing Utah, ranked 14, but they're playing without Cam Rising. So I think it's going to be a pretty interesting game. I think – now Cam Rising is not playing. I think he's a stud. He's probably a decent draft pick um, in this year's draft. But without him playing, I think Florida's going to have an opportunity uh, to uh, pull off an upset here. At Utah's big, too. That's a hard state yeah. to play in. So they got an opportunity. I mean, Florida always has a good defense. Biggest question marks going to be their offense, their quarterback, and the wide receivers. Their running backs are good. They got fucking baby ETN, and uh, they got another, another dude over there as a stud last year. Their defense is yeah. is there. They said it's gonna be better this year, but their defense last year was just dog shit. And but they have a new they coordinator, that, I believe. They still got that four hundred pounder back there. Yeah, they have two big D tackles. <laughs> I think like they're both three hundred ninety plus pounds. So I mean, like, no, so they got they got one dude's like four hundred. And they show they keep showing his highlights still. Yeah, four is interesting though. I I think they have two new quarterbacks. They're gonna have to pick from. They have Wisconsin's old quarterback Mertz. He's a pocket passer. It's both QBs are not like AR. They're not athletic like freaks where they're going to run around, make plays. So different style, style offense this year, I guess, for them, more of a pocket passer. So, yeah, all eyes out of Florida Gators. I mean, yeah. to be honest, I think all eyes out of all the Florida schools this year, Miami, Florida State, UCF, and uh, UF are going to be big, big teams to watch this year. And like, well, like it's, I told it's on Miami every single year, and they just continue to shit the bed. <laughs> They do. Yeah, but like yeah. I texted y'all earlier today when I texted the news about Utah's quarterback is like if Florida wins this game and gains some confidence, I mean, they have a pretty good path to have a very good record this year. I mean, they do play Georgia, which is going to be a tough game. But like LSU and Tennessee, like we all know how SEC games go, how hard LSU and Florida play, like that could be a trap game. And then South Tennessee. Too. Yeah. Like, and then Tennessee, which is like a game that I want to talk about in a little bit, but like Florida has a shot to have a very good record if they end up upsetting Utah and gaining that confidence. See, well, we thought the same thing last year too when they won at the Swamp and then they went, I think, six and seven. And then they had Anthony Richardson. Who, who was by far a better athlete than these two he- QBs. I mean – but it's he all, also did not have that good a season last year. Like he no, did not he play like twenty two hundred yards. This is not the like backup had, AR, but the receiver like seventeen touchdowns or one game he had a full half without completing a pass. Don't get me wrong, I agree with you. He's not <laughs> a great po- pocket passer or whatever, but his receivers also didn't do much help neither. They were pretty dog shit as well. They Florida's receivers haven't been really just haven't been good recently in like the last few years. So he wasn't fortunate to play with guys like Kyle Pitts and Kadarius Tony. And Percy Harvin. Well, that's that's many moons ago. And by the way, he wasn't even on the he wasn't apparently on that documentary for the uh, Swamp Kings. He didn't even talk. No, which is shocker. I mean, he was one Dude, of the best talk, players on that, that offense. That documentary fucking sucked. I've it heard mixed good. reviews. I've heard mixed I reviews. I hated it. I mean, like I told what I like I told y'all y'all Bishop Sycamore documentary is way better. I know Doc watched a little bit of it because <laughs> there's like, nothing good to talk. No, about. No, I finished it. it. I finished it's it. Better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I finished it too. I watched it. It's pretty good. Well, it's yeah, just I finished like, it the next day. It's like they actually came in and talked about the dirty fucking secrets. Like they, all it was was dirty. There was nothing clean there. It was all well. Dirt I mean, true, this. true. There's nothing good, but like they Netflix could have killed and crushed that Florida documentary and let out all the dirty secrets. But I'm telling I'm you, like, fucking. I just bring out Urban Meyer, make him look good again. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly what it was. They're Urban Meyer probably fucking. He, he's trying to get that next job. He's trying oh, to get that next job. 
No, I don't. I don't think any. I don't think any program or NFL franchise would give no. him a shot. I bet they would. I bet some college I, team would take him. I, in a I don't. I don't think I'm after big. not the not the Florida stuff, but after what recently happened with Jacksonville and all the shit that happened there. No, I don't think he'll get he gets a chance in shot. college if he wants it. And it's not he's, even like he's, he's he's got a job on TV still. Like they people Fox, still yeah. Urban Meyer. Yeah, Fox <laughs> took him. If he's such a bad guy, but it's not like it's not about somebody would take a chance on him. It's not even about what he did. It's it's fucking he sucked in Jacksonville. He wasn't good. Oh yeah, Nick Saban sucked in the NFL. Yeah, well, he was better than that. He he was at least eight and eight both years. Not so the Harbaugh fired in the first year. Harbaugh didn't Harbaugh didn't suck. Harbaugh went to a Super Bowl, dude. Oh, that's right. That's right. He's he turned Alex he turned out Smith around and actually made him a good quarterback because he built the team the right way. And gave Cap. I mean, he's one that put Kaepernick in after Smith got hurt. No, I'm thinking it's Har- well, was Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly, right? Chip Kelly. Har- I'm thinking, I'm thinking yeah. Chip Kelly. Yeah. Chip Kelly burned the Eagles to, to the ground and rebuilt <laughs> it for no reason when they had Jeremy Macklin, and Mike Vick, and Deshaun Jackson, like and Lashawn McCoy. Fucking four freaks right there, and you burn them to the ground and say, "Yeah, fuck it, we're we're just gonna get rid of all of you guys." No. Start Nick Foles I- over over Michael Vick. No, fucking Auburn picked up Hugh Freeze though, and you look what he did. Like he's a fucking shitty person too. Well, I guess colleges don't care as much. I mean, I, I'm not yeah. saying the NFL. So I, I are think, better, I, think but... a, I think a college team would take uh, Urban Meyer. I mean, he succeeded would... in every college he's been at too. It's not like he, yeah. He's so not, I think somebody did he take, take Utah him. to a 13 and 0 season? I don't know. I mean, I if they Five did, they should claim. Point. If they did, they should claim that national championship because they yeah. were undefeated. Were they, were they the only team that was undefeated? But they were undefeated, so they were co they were co champions, co national champions. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the record book. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, <laughs> I yeah, I was just pivot off our admire. Uh, Chris, I I know you mentioned Drake May this week too, like playing South Carolina in Charlotte. It's a neutral site, Battle of the Carolinas, North Carolina, Tar Heels versus South Carolina Gamecocks. Spencer Adler versus uh, Drake May. A lot of eyes gonna be on Drake May this year. Yeah, I mean, I think this is definitely one of like the runner up biggest games this year i mean i know it's not two huge names but you have drake may gonna be at least a top three quarterback in this draft coming up what can he do what does ritter do in his second season second season i believe at south carolina or does he play no it was second season i, I think yeah. 2021 was his last year in oklahoma because i was deployed when he was he was a uh, still in oklahoma they sat yeah. him for caleb williams yeah, so I think I think this is this is gonna be his second season in the system. I also think they should rename this fucking uh, Will Levis's classic because it's Mayo, Duke's Mayo classic. But he's sponsored by. Side note, too. I know. Hold on. Side note. Shout out to that man for making one tiny fucking joke about putting mayo in his coffee, and now he has a lifetime deal with. What's the fucking company that makes oh, the mayo? It's, it's with the H, right? Helms. Or- Helms, yeah, and it wasn't a joke though. No, he actually Hellman's? does that. Shit. Helms, yeah, that's what Doc Hellman's? said. Yeah, it, but oh, it wasn't okay. a joke though. He actually does that shit. Like that's not that ain't a joke to him. That's yeah. fucking life. Mayonnaise in this coffee. Know, but like, shout out to that fucking man. For the record, for two undefeated seasons for Urban Meyer: two thousand four with Utah, twelve and zero, and two thousand twelve with Ohio State. Uh, they well, were they were by the yeah they were they were not yeah. bowl eligible that year, so there's no bowl game there, but. 2004, 12 and, 0. and and mind you, Utah. That's an interesting, like that's an impressive team to go 12 and 0 with in 2004. 10 and 2 the year before. Well, who? So who won that coach. year too? College kids, at least he can coach. I don't know who won that year. Um, I'll, I'll look it up. They finished fourth in the AP. So that year, uh, that was that was USC. Which was which oh, was, was that vacated? Matt yeah, that was vacated, by the way. So I guess we have to give it to them because yeah, USC was a little bit off. Vacated. So that makes sense. At least someone was vacated. So it's crazy. Is there was three undefeated teams: Auburn, USC, and Utah. So we have a three fucking. We have three co champions in 2004 now. It's fucking nuts, dude. I'm getting the t-shirt made. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, especially since USC had to give up their championship. I guess if someone has, they should let them fucking Utah play Auburn right now. Doesn't matter. Bring them all back. Bring them all back. Yeah. We'll, we'll call Bring it the senior bowl. We'll yeah. call it the AARP bowl. No, back to Drake May though, Chris. Like, I know Doc said that he 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 kind of had some struggles last year. I would love, I look back at it. Drake May actually had a very really good year last year. The North Carolina's problem 
which is going to be the problem this year, is their fucking defense. Their defense is dog shit, which is not something you normally see under a Mac Brown-led team. I mean, I guess it's different when you were coaching at Texas back in the 2000s and defense was actually emphasized with them. So, yeah, the North Carolina and Drake Mason have to do what, like you said, Caleb Williams has to do. He has to fucking outperform his defense and fucking put up 40-plus points every single week just to stay relevant for North Carolina this year. I said that Drake May had a had a bad season. You said that year? you said that he looked, you said you said towards the end he wasn't really that good. Cuz we were talking about Drake May being good and you were like he's not really that good. He fell off last year. I don't know. It was a couple that episodes all. ago. All right. It was a few episodes ago, but I mean, I looked at it and I was like his numbers were fantastic and then his defense. No, I was just, a I mean, huge I remember, proponent for him. I was I was rooting. I mean, I didn't think he was going to win the MVP, but I thought he deserved to be in the conversation. I mean, I remember it was Appalachian State, or whatever. That it was like fifty plus points, both teams scored something like that. Like it was just nuts. Yeah, it was last 60, year. It was sixty three, sixty one. I mean, I'm looking <laughs> at their schedule now. I mean, like they they didn't play bad last year at all. The games they they did lose, it was single digits. I mean, they lost to Oregon by one point in the Holiday Bowl. <laughs> App I mean, State had Luke Combs getting him fired up on College Game Day too, but that yeah. wasn't that game though. I don't think that was the that that's, was a different game. Is that a different? That's game? actually the game for this yeah, week. That yeah, that's game. my upset for this week. I can see South Carolina taking that game think, from from North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, right now it's. Let me see real quick. Let me go back to. It. I mean, do do we have sleepers this year too? I mean, like I, I saw a highlight. They were talking about sleepers. Like TCU was that sleeper last year that no one thought. Well, there's some people that are hot on Oregon State. They got Clemson's uh, quarterback, DJ. I can't pronounce his last name, but he came over there to Oregon State. They have a lot of guys returning, and they're they're ranked. They were they're pretty good last year in the Pac-12. Is Oregon State are, like are a we, TCU type? Are we saying a sleeper like somebody outside top 25? No, I mean just teams that you would never think are gonna. It, it could be ranked teams that are in the top 25 that you don't think has a shot really to get there, and like they have a successful year like TCU mm-hmm. did last year. I mean, I'll go real quick, but to start, Doc, the line is UNC 2.5. I mean, I think South Carolina can beat that and hit the over. Yeah, I'm not so. putting money on it, but I, if, I'm, if I'm looking at the schedule this week and who, you know, the rank they're playing and uh, the opposition, the only other one that I could see being an upset, um, minus a lot of weapons this year for Tennessee, Virginia has known to be that sneaky team to come in and win win big games, especially early in the year, especially the first couple weeks of the year. Uh, and if they pull their injury bullshit like they did against FSU a couple of years ago that got that, got that season off to a rocking start, um, falling down and getting hurt every 30 seconds to slow the play down and the hurry-up offense for the Seminoles. Um, every college does that. <laughs> Virginia, Virginia is honestly another team that can be sneaky and, and pull one away from, from Tennessee. Well, I mean, that's the big thing, like, I was telling y'all, and I voiced it a lot, is that, like, Tennessee's the team I'm looking at right now is because, like, you lose your starting quarterback, you lose two great wide receivers, you lost some offensive line, you lost some defensive side of the ball. And last year, Tennessee's defense wasn't that great. I mean, Hooker had to put up numbers to win games. So, I mean, did Tennessee reload enough to be able to – outlast or did their defense step up where they can stay in these games it doesn't matter they got josh hype out there man man's a fucking legend yeah, yeah that's true he, he, very, very good teach, coach at ucf yeah teach him about fucking josh hype dude like tell him tell josh him pretty good out. i mean he he took a winning program and made it a little bit worse at ucf but <laughs> 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 never mind chris so. never mind He's, yeah <laughs> scott frost he took a, yeah because that was a, that was a scott frost scott, like yeah yeah it's, Frost got his dream job and fucking failed. And Heupel took over UCF when they were undefeated, which he led them to an undefeated season next year, and they lost to LSU in the bowl game. Five. Thank by you, one UCF, score. for getting Joe Burrow started too. Like that hit made him riled him up, man. Man, he is. Yeah, yeah. he's he, trying to say UCF didn't hit hard, but it kind of looked like he got hit pretty hard. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I remember that he, he got that. fucking really <laughs> yeah, he, felt it. <laughs> He uh, he got rocked. He got back up though. He yeah. he, he fucking he, he came back. He's on. Yeah, because Joe, Joe Burrow was a little bit a little bit shaky that that his first year at LSU. So and that's why he, he only throws well, slants but, now, thanks to UCF. Yeah, yeah. He that's he's he's scared to take his deep passes because fucking yep. he got the picked tra- off and got fucking leveled. He he ain't about throwing interceptions anymore. Choo choo, motherfuckers. Deep <laughs> those deep slants are nasty though. Uh, deep, <laughs> yeah, deep the, slant fucking killed him in college. 
Those post slants are pretty good. He's got. So I, I mean, know. I, I don't know because after he took that hit, he sure did fucking throw it all down y'all's throat. So yeah, he has, this is two games after McKenzie Milton died. Which we were uh, there for that one. Yeah, we were, we were at that game. For, we were at and that McKenzie game. Mel- that- McKenzie Milton was in the Heisman running that year before he got I, hurt. I Me and Luke were really drunk. on defense. Me and Luke were really drunk and like it just got quiet all of a sudden. And we're like, yo, and we're in the USF fucking student section too, rocking black and gold. Yeah. And we're like, yo, what the fuck happened? And then here comes the fucking like helicopter and shit. Man, I'm like, oh, Chad man. McKenzie Milton, solid player. Came back after that horror effort, late leg injury, played Florida State for a year. Uh, did did decent. I mean, he never the same player when he after he got hurt, but it's good for him. Good comeback set. story. He was that big upset. They almost upset Notre Dame week one. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Very close. They took him to overtime. Yeah, he, he came Notre in or played. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. He, I mean, but sleep, sleepers. I mean, I'm looking honestly. I don't want to say it, but I mean, I'm looking like I mentioned earlier. Notre Dame. I mean, Sam Hartman looked like. He knew what he was doing out there. The offense was clicking. The defense was clicking. Their schedule, very favorable. I mean, they play Ohio and Clemson. I mean, if they can get past that Ohio game, they have a – what do you what, – what you Every fucking, fucking year it's for? a – every fucking year it's a favorable schedule. They never play anybody. Every goddamn year they never – they got the Massachusetts <laughs> Minutemen. That's their toughest competition every year. Stanford ain't been shit in years. USC ain't shit. Well, at USC is shit, is shit now, but they, they just recently came back on the scene. They ain't had a fucking schedule to play, and every year it's going back, and I'll say it again, going back to the 2013 National Championship, they had no business being in that game. They got absolutely fucking steamrolled by the Seminoles. They, they're they a fucking terrible team. They're my sleeper <laughs> pick to fucking get shit on and fall off Jesus. the side of a mountain. Doc, <laughs> I, Doc. I, I, I think you picked a touchy subject right here. Doc, yeah, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something real quick, right? Yep. Notre Dame, two ranked teams on their schedule right now. Ohio State and Clemson. And they're going to get okay. fucking steamrolled by both. And, hey, but you said it's a very favorable schedule, right? Yep. FSU, LSU, Clemson. Who's that? Very For favorable schedule or what? Very. Absolutely. For FSU. A- FSU? Yeah, FSU, y'all play Clemson and LSU. That's your two ranked teams on your schedule. Other yep. than that, you don't play fucking anybody. I'd still put their strength of schedule higher than Notre Dame. I'm just uh, – Well, I mean, what's the what, – who else does Notre Dame play compared to Florida State? Here, I'll pull up – I have Florida State right here. You pull up – you have Notre Dame? Pull it up on the pull, – pull, put it on the screen for all the viewers to see. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I can't fucking split screen it. Here, I'll just read it out loud. Fuck that. I got Florida State right here, Chris. I'll, I'll read theirs real quick. So, Florida State, let's run through their schedule. They start off, obviously, it's, it's a neutral side game, but they're the home team against LSU. Southern Miss at home. They go at Boston College, at Clemson on a bye week. Home for Virginia Tech. Home for Syracuse. Home for Duke. At Wake Forest. At Pitt. Home for Miami. Home for North Alabama. And then they go to the Swamp to end their season at Florida. Yeah, so, I mean, Pitt, Pitt can pick. Pitt's usually competitive. So I, I give Pitt challenge. Pitt might be ranked by then. I mean, Syracuse we'll can sneak out. They've done it before. Yeah, I mean, Miami will probably play them tough, too. In-state just rivalry. They, just because they play them tough, though, doesn't mean that they're a good yeah. team. So, like, like, I'm not saying they're a good team, but I think they play Florida State There's tough. nothing that makes Three. Notre Dame a good team. Well, it is, it's also hard for them to recruit than guys that, that Florida State. Like, Florida State doesn't have the same, like, Standards that Notre, Notre Dame has when it comes to recruiting, yeah. Too. Notre Dame's a very hard school to recruit. I mean, right, you don't have to be Kelly a diehard left. Catholic to play. Yeah, I know. Well, it's, it's not like even Brian Kelly left. about being religious. It's the academic portion of it. They don't waive that shit for a student athletes. That's why Brian Kelly left. He wanted to go to a program he thought he had potential to actually compete and get like true five star talent and high far, four star talent. I mean. I'm not high on Notre Dame, but I mean, Florida State's schedule is really not that easy. I don't know what they have. So, I mean, plus Chris has it in front of my. I didn't even bring up Florida State, State in this shit, okay? No, I'm just uh, I'm just saying, I mean, you're shitting on Notre Dame about their schedule. It's just. Because, no, I'm not, I'm not shitting on them this year about their schedule. I'm shitting on them because every single year they get highly ranked. They had the same shit last year. They started out what? 0 3, 0 4? They started out no, pretty they, rough last year, I think. They started off rough. I don't think it was 0 3. I think they won a game in there. 
Either way, but moment. every year yeah. they're high in the talks to be contenders, highly ranked in the preseason, and and they're fucking they're not that good of a team. They don't. It's not this year. It's every year they don't play shit. And you want to talk about Florida State playing Boston College and Wake Forest? Like, I didn't look. I haven't looked at Notre Dame schedule this year, but they. Well, I mean, I looked at. I don't remember mm-hmm. everybody that they play, but Notre Dame typically plays the same shit. Boston College, Wake Forest. They 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 just they jump USC around and pick the. Year. Yeah, they, yeah, and they're gonna get fucking shit on by USC. They do hop around from time to time with like Michigan and like 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 Clemson, and Florida State guys like that. They they play a mixture of the ACC, sometimes the Big Ten, and, and then the Pac-12 as well. Like that's usually the three conferences. I've seen them mostly touch. in the ACC and, and Pac-12. They they have oh maybe it's been a while since they've done the Big Ten, but they have played like I know that I remember they played Michigan. So I was stationed uh, when they beat I think they beat Michigan or Michigan might have upset them. One of the they actually might have been the year before Harbaugh got there. Um. But sleeper though, real quick before Chris pulls that up, I, I think the Huskies. I, I think that they were a really good team last year out of, out of UW Washington. Uh, they got Michael Penix. Um, he's he's a beast. He was a, he was a freak last year. Their defense is solid. Like they didn't really need to do much last year. They have a great pass rush. They have their linebackers might be one of the best linebacking core in college football. And then their offense isn't that bad either. They were pretty productive last year. Obviously, you have question marks with you know Utah if they're going to be back this year. You have USC and of course Oregon State and Washington State was pretty good last year too. So they they have some pretty good schools out here in the Pac-12. Um, yeah, Pacific you're, Northwest. you're leaving Oregon out too. I said Oregon, I think, didn't I? You said Oregon State. Uh, well, Oregon, I don't trust Oregon in big games anymore. That has to do with Willie Taggart. They've always been right. a team that chokes yeah, in big yeah. games. Kind no no year of Bo Nix though. So, yeah, he looked good last I mean, year. Yeah, I, I think he'll play a little bit better second year in the system. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I agree. Yeah. I think I think Oregon's always going to be tough, but yeah. this is why it's a sleeper. I think, I think Washington, like the tenth ranked team, as a sleeper. Well, but. it is a sleeper because not a lot of people are going to. They don't have water. Like a lot of people have them with like two or three losses. That's not good enough to get in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people say Penn State's a sleeper this year because they can't ever get over Ohio State and Michigan. So, which is their this is like Chris said. I was doing some reading today and some videos watching. This is apparently Penn State's most talented team since 2016 when they had Saquon yeah. and the boys out there. So a lot of people are high on Penn State, too, and they have a uh, – it's against West Virginia, but all eyes should be on that game, too, see how that team looks out there at home. Uh, I, think, I think I'm going to go with Ole Miss, for my, my sleeper, ranked 22 to start out the year. They got somewhat of a tough schedule, but got a lot of returning players, uh, darts back, QB, so – I like them. Like they're they got Tulane, which is ranked twenty four. They play Alabama. Then the next week they play LSU. Then a couple of weeks later they got uh, Texas A and M. Then after that's Georgia. So if they get if they go on a run, they they easily take the number one seed in the SEC the West. Yeah, they can get the West, and then they'll have to play yeah. Georgia or something like that. They're, they're or playing whatever. all the all the top teams in the SEC, and if they can go on a run I mean, this year, I mean, Luke's true sleepers. Even if they win two out of three of those, I mean, your true sleeper is Tennessee, to be honest. Well, yeah, well, I'm not. I'm trying to look a little bit like lower ranked yeah, teams but, to be a sleeper team. But Tennessee's a sleeper. I'm just saying. Like, I think Ole Miss will be good. I'm just picking them as an a sleeper team. Do I think this it'll actually happen? Probably not. Yeah, but hey, what might beat Alabama if they, though? If they just go on a run, they got the schedule to get, like the fucking back them. Yeah, I, so I it's agree. not like an easy schedule. I mean, the West is definitely far is definitely far harder than the SEC East. It always is, uh, at least in our time frame right now. The West is usually better than the East. I mean, it, the West was far better than the East, besides for like the last three years where Georgia decided to fucking step it the fuck up. I mean, you know, Georgia's been the only consistent team in the yeah. East since that 2017 season when they lost to Bama in the championship. Florida had a year or two in between that, but with Trask, I know one year with Trask, they they got to the SC championship, but no. Uh, hey, but don't know if y'all saw – well, Doc, do you have a sleeper? I know it's not the Irish. Um, ride the wave. Ride the wave. <laughs> yeah, ride the two-lane wave, dude. Two-lane. No, I think if I'm going sleeper, I think I like Tennessee still this year. Um, I think even losing um, all the weapons that they did last year, I think um, – Quarterback come back. I think that there there's a lot to be there's a lot of redemption in in Tennessee this year. I'm hoping to see an uh, increase in the offense or an improvement in, or in the defense. Excuse me. Um, 
I'm I'm high on Tennessee. Nice. No, nah, but Doc, I know you have a problem with Colin Coward, right? You know, you always say fuck Colin Coward. And that's this has nothing to do with Colin Coward, but your Colin Coward is my Paul Feinbaum. I fucking hate this guy. I I, I understand he's an SEC fucking favoritism guy and his fucking power, his final four came out and he's got two SEC schools in there. No shocker. Two Big Ten schools as well. He's got Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, and returning what Alabama. Yeah, so I just fuck that guy. I I, I just can't stand him. I like, do. I don't know why ESPN still employs this guy. I do well, want to take the it. opportunity to say fuck Colin Cowherd and everything that you're about. <laughs> you're a sack of shit. Um, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You need duct tape. Um, fuck you, Colin Cowherd. And that's a word from our sponsors. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> Paul, it's not about him being like favoritism towards the SEC. It's because he literally works on the SEC network, so he has to it, be. But, but yeah, yeah, Mark. I mean, yeah. I get. It. I mean, SEC Mark, sponsors you're, you're, you for the show. Yeah, you're about to be an SEC fanboy, anyways. You're yeah, already halfway there. But hey, it's supposed to be re- you know realistic. Yeah, you never, you, know, you also... never talk good about the SEC until Texas said they're moving. No, I've you always said the SEC. biggest SEC hater. I said the SEC in the no, Big Ten. I always said the no, SEC, SEC in the Big Ten were the best conferences. No, shit's, I've always said that. I've. Changed when did I ever now. say that? When did I ever say the Big Twelve or the ACC or Pac twelve was the best conference? Please let me know yeah. when I've ever said that. No, I mean I. I don't have the tapes on that because we weren't. I've never because I've, 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 I've never said that. <laughs> I've, I've I've honestly said the Big Ten has been the best conference. I think prior to. The year I was deployed probably, in 2021, probably, I, was, probably, I was still riding the probably, Big Ten. Probably until Texas moving to the SEC. That's probably when you change no. your mind. Yeah, yep, that's to do with it. Because I don't have <laughs> yeah, that. He, he was only riding the Big Ten because he was anticipating Texas going to the Big Ten. Yeah. Look, you thought, the, a- they switched, you thought, the, AAC, you thought the AAC was a dominant conference for a while, too. They, they were pretty good. Yeah, they get their one opportunity for, group, for, for the group of five. Yeah, they, they put the wrong team in. UCF Why? was undefeated two years in a row and didn't get a shot. Didn't Cincinnati go undefeated that year too? Yeah, they only went undefeated one season. Yeah, I UCF mean, went undefeated. Two seasons they only in a went row. undefeated one season. Fucking jackass. Yeah, so they don't, they don't deserve it. I guess I guess to go one season, they have to go two. UCF but laid laid the ground. They played in a real conference. I, I've always truly thought it's been the SEC and the Big Ten. It's been like that for years. I mean, besides the year that Oklahoma last went to the championship against Florida. When they shouldn't even gone, it should have been Texas. But that was the year it was still BCS, but that was that through a tie with Texas Tech, Oklahoma, and Texas, and they somehow blessed OU when it, it shouldn't have been. But hey, that's near here or there. But I've always thought, at least in the 2010 era on, it's been Big Ten, it's been SEC football, and and probably basketball too. Like it's just unfortunate. SEC has really come right up now. for basketball. Basketball used to be a Big Ten. Yeah, not anymore. I mean. I hate to say it, like I, I still would love for teams to fail in the SEC, even though we're going there. Like I'd still love to see Alabama fail. Uh Florida, they can kick rocks too. I'm not a huge Gator fan, but yeah, there's only a couple of handful of teams I would like in the SEC to actually compete and win championships every year if Texas doesn't do it. I'm pretty much good with all of them except Alabama. I don't like I don't like the Gators. It's different though for you for us, Doc. We're we lived in Florida, so Yeah. It's a lot different. But yeah, college is here, boys. Like I said tomorrow it's- night. It's fucking here. here. And we're eight days away from the NFL season. Oh. Woo! Football's back. Don't know if you all saw that. Jonathan Taylor, they the Dolphins offered a Jalen Waddle to him and they said, That's not worth it. That's not that's not worth enough. You know, your number two wide receiver who's a number one in almost in any other team, not enough for us to give up Jonathan Taylor, who we're not gonna pay. And we're not gonna get back next year. Yeah, so good for eight. And then Chris Ballard, I, I showed Doc you didn't see it. They asked why they're not paying him, and he said, well, we only won four games last year. So, like, why the fuck do you guys still have him then? It just makes no sense. I mean, he makes a valid point, though. Yeah. Then why – then, yeah. then if, it, well, if he's not worth – but if he's not worth the, if he's not he, worth the money, then he's, why, is he not, why is he worth the first-round draft pick? I would trade him to Atlanta for Bijan. It's yeah. just he like – answered the question. I, I mean, he answered the question, yeah, but, like, Indy – Poorly like, answered. – themselves – Nice. Sorry, you don't ways, like the answer. Two ways. Because I'm Indy. I'm looking for a way to fuck Jonathan Taylor, and I'm probably trading him to Cleveland because that's just where careers go to die. They offered you yeah. – well, not running game. Doesn't they offered No, not you running a, game, but you ain't going to win. I mean, they have they have more playoff wins recently than like a lot of other teams in the NFL do. 
So I mean, I guess every other team's pretty shitty then too. Yeah, but back to I mean back to JT. I mean, you want you're voicing your opinion that you want all these high draft picks, but then at the same side behind the closed door, it's like we're not paying you. Yeah, this is what happens when players want to fight billionaires. Players want to fight billionaires, and Ursay's not, and not the billionaire is going to give in and just pay him. No, we understand not paying him. I think you get get a lot of insight on the way Ursay is with uh, Pat McAfee show. We, yeah, he's. I don't think he's going to give in. Or I probably he probably doesn't give a fuck whether the Colts are good or bad. Well, it's not. We're not ridiculing like what Mark's about to say is. We're not ridiculing him about not paying him. It's fine if you don't want to pay him, don't fucking pay him. But don't say you value him as a first round pick, but then say you're but not going to pay, pay him, him yeah. as a first round pick. Yeah. That's the problem. Or you sit here like Jalen Waddle, who is literally a top ten wide receiver, is not worth it. When he is a first round wide receiver that was picked in the draft, he was the sixth overall pick a few years ago, and he's better than any Colts wide receiver on the roster right now. Would well, help AR. I don't think I I was under the assumption the Colts were asking for Waddle and mm. Miami said no. No, they said that Jalen Waddle is not enough. They need to put Jalen Waddle with more compensation. <laughs> I I'll, agree. I'll I think a draft pick needs to I'll go with it. it. No, nothing official. Yeah, not, not a first rounder in Jalen Waddle. Like you're already getting a first rounder. No, 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 no. Yeah, it. it ain't gonna be. It ain't gonna be a first rounder. Jalen Waddle's gonna improve that offense. Yeah, he's gonna help Jay, AR. Jay, I mean, I, I don't know how much, but he'll help him a little bit. He's actually gonna be a wishy that gets open. Well, he's gonna. He's gonna need a lot of help. If Waddle went to Indy, I would have felt so bad for all dynasty and fantasy <laughs> owners of Jalen oh, Waddle. God. I got him. I got him in dynasty. So don't don't move him just yet. Come on, I, Indy. I feel bad. For, I'm, I'm hoping yeah, Luke, Luke's team can't years. afford to get predicted any lower points. I know. Luke, I, I, made, I made a couple adjustments today, so my, my points are up a little bit. I saw you yeah, change your man, team name. I saw you change your team name. Man had a fucking suspended player on his active roster. I saw, I saw that. I saw the last one he drafted. Nobody picked it up when I said something when he drafted him. I saw 119 projected. I was like, wow, my redraft, which we only have, we only have like not that many players compared to it. I have fucking two less points projected with my fucking kicker and defense. Hey, I, got, I got, there. A bunch, got a bunch of rookies. I'm, I'm, I'm playing the long game here. Hey, Doc's, Doc's team lost a point. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what the I fuck's going too. on. Chris's team's going up. I'm going down. I don't know what the fuck's going on over here. I don't know, but I fucking <laughs> like it. I lost a couple as well. I was supposed to lose by like one. Now I'm supposed to lose by five. So. We'll oh, that's see. a lot I mean, bigger move. I'll, I'll go ahead and settle your I'll go ahead and settle your nerves, Chris, because uh, every every game every year, I'm projected to score so many fucking points, and then I I score probably about eighty five percent every game. I just I I want to be the guy. I want to have the job where I go into the sleeper app and say, hey, you know what? I think this player is going to score twenty points this week. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking guess, because you're not mad at that guy if he does or doesn't. Yeah, Fuck I mean, it. you get you, you. All have to do is write a good little article of why you think it's going to happen, and then put it down. It's, it's like the yeah. weatherman. It's, yeah, it's like, like being telling the weather. It might rain. It yeah. might snow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, just bring knows. bring gear. Bring all types of gear out there with you. That's all you got to do. There's no better feeling too than starting a player projected twenty points and he gets four and a half, and you're just like, man, what a good day. Luke, I, saw, day. I saw you. Or, I saw you change your name. What'd you zero. change it? Or he gets hurt in the second and... snap of the game. Um, uh, I, I saw yeah. you. It popped up on my phone, I but I didn't. I didn't look into it that hard. I forgot what I changed it to. It was uh, I think oh, pick picking wildflowers. So pickings oh. and flowers. So picking wildflowers. Yeah, I like, oh, that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. That's creative. Yeah, it's yeah. good, man. I can't it think of anything. Took, took me about like five minutes to think about it. I was like, oh well, fuck. I was like, looking at uh, players. Put, you put the effort in. You put the time. I in. can't yeah. think it. I can't think of anything. Hopefully, so hopefully two players that'll be on my, my dynasty team for a little while. So I don't have to change well, the name. Well, they're young, so I mean Yeah, two young guys. So. A year year two and a first year rookie. I, I have my redraft name solid to the T. I can't get a dynasty name. So I just did just relax. Relax is all capitals because I got Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers. So you gotta do better. I, I can't you I can't, can't, can't Aaron Rodgers is only gonna be there for like two years. Hey, breaking well, yeah, breaking yeah. yeah. Breaking news real quick, right? I just opened – I don't – for some reason, I don't get sleeper notifications on my phone. They go to my I, iPad. I don't, I don't get sleeper notifications at they, all. My notifications go to my iPad and not my phone. 
Hmm. But yeah, mine goes so I phone. just opened I opened up the sleeper app, right? Oh boy, Morningwood, right? Proposed to trade. Oh boy. No. Yeah. Oh god. He's he, he was hot on draft <laughs> night, dude. He was hot on draft yeah. night. He wants, I think he offered everyone a fucking trade that night. He wants he wants JJ and <laughs> Javante <laughs> Williams for he got? he got Aaron Jones, Cooper Cup, a 2025 first round and a 2024 second round. Well, he's, he's, he's trying to win he's, he's just gonna... trying to dump future picks. Yeah. You know, yeah, do it? 2025. Fuck no. <laughs> Cooper Cup has what, like two more years in the league? And Aaron yeah, Jones probably it. has equivalent to that. So you're going to tell me I'm trading away two fucking very young studs? Yeah, I mean, JJ, JJ's 24 and Javante's 23. I think this first year it's going to be interesting for Dynasty. And I think not just you, Chris, but all of us like that don't play Dynasty that's used to only redraft. We have to get that mindset out. Like we have to learn how not saying that not obviously I don't I don't blame you for to decline that trade, but trades in general, we have to learn how to realize that not we're not always gonna be getting fleeced or fucked over because we have to play the long like the long haul game. It's not a redraft. So you sometimes have to realize that if you're not doing good, you have to rebuild. So it's gonna be a different mindset for that that type of a league. I think Jalen Waddle might be my oldest player. Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, the Colt. Oh yeah, and by the way, the Colts have no. The Colts have no players over thirty years old too. So How's they Mooney? are a young ass team. Or Mc- well, Mooney's been uh, in for a few years. Doc's the best. Yeah, he might be, be, my, be up there. He might be my oldest player then. Mooney, I think he's twenty five, twenty six. He might be my old guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, have, I told you, I, have, I, want, I want it all super young, like first three years, all my players. I think all those players, Aaron Rodgers. So play, play, <laughs> play, play, oh, yeah, you, you didn't play, you played a short game on Aaron Rodgers' pick. Oh, and speaking of Aaron Rodgers, some fucking Giants player said he doesn't know who the fuck Aaron Rodgers is on Hard Knocks. Like, what kind of clown is this? Aaron Rodgers hit it with it first. Oh, he was like, well, I don't know who you are. Like, okay, well, even if you're joking, that ain't even, first off, that ain't even good comeback. Everyone is Aaron Rodgers. Hard. Is. Hard knock set up the Giants to look very bad in that in that little clip, but and that I mean, block I wasn't that bad, by the way. No, that, that was, was the worst. It, it that was wasn't the worst blind. It was, but not not as bad as what a lot of people do. Like that was borderline. Like he said, like Aaron Rodgers said, it's not 2014 anymore, but that was close to like being able because he was coming sideways, kind of. He wasn't coming. He wasn't coming back to his end zone really. So it was yeah, close. But, it could, I mean, it's preseason. Definitely don't fucking be doing that shit. But like, Sean Taylor used to blow up punters in the Pro Bowl, dude. Like, yeah, that's the Pro Bowl. That's his. That's, 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 that's when the Pro Bowl mattered. That's when it was entertaining. It still didn't matter back then. Those well, players, I mean, it's, it's, those players it was entertaining about, back then, though. Yeah, and those players are about to have a whole off season if they get injured. Well, Sean Taylor only knew one fucking way, though, and that was kill the person in front of me. Like, I'm, I'm full on. I'm here to fucking show you who safety is. But yeah, that, I don't know. Like, yeah, they might have something to be bad, but that was kind of a stupid comment. That, that's a bad comeback, honestly. You don't tell Aaron Rodgers. I don't yeah. know who you are. A, you, you can't hit somebody with the same comeback that they just gave you, especially like, to a four time, like, especially yeah. to a four time MVP. Aaron Rodgers probably really <laughs> didn't know who that guy was. Yeah, he probably. I, I wouldn't doubt Rodgers <laughs> not knowing who he is. <laughs> he probably actually didn't know him. I saw a comment that said, "Didn't the Giants play the Packers last year?" So. Pretty sure you know who Aaron Rodgers is if he was the quarterback. So, but no, man, great show, boys. Monday, Chris, I know you won't be here, but text me those picks. We're going to have week Monday one preview. Doc's not here. Oh, I'm but... sorry. Doc won't be here. That's right. You won't be here for the college one. And, yeah, just college. Yeah, so, Doc, shoot us those those text picks or text those picks. Also, join our fucking fantasy games too, buddy. You're slacking. Yeah, so I need to get in that. I got to do that tomorrow. I know you're a busy man out there. Do you have that laundry folder, by the way? We had a comment on there said you guys are really talking about laundry on the show. <laughs> yeah, negative. That's a big negative. I actually just pulled some out of the dryer and went ahead and threw it on the floor in the bedroom. Um, I had to wash them clothes nice. for tomorrow. So, uh, Hell yeah, teach, brother. teach the kid. Teach the kid how to fucking fold clothes. 
Teach no, she's life. still she's still in the in the stage of running through the laundry when I do fold it. That's probably what turns me off the most because I go downstairs, like I'll bring it downstairs to fold, and then she'll just start fucking pulling towels and socks and all the shit that I've been folding and just fucking throwing it around and just running through it. You, you tell her she lives here rent free. She needs to fucking fold some clothes. No, she's getting a fucking <laughs> job soon. I've already talked to Emily about it. Child labor's not bad at you know at this age, no. three years old. Not How not do bad. you have your iPhone? It's legal. Either. It's legal. <laughs> It's my own kid. It's legal. That's exactly. true. As as you know what day I fear the most? You know what? You know what day I fear the most? When my daughter finds out what allowance is and that her friends are getting it, and she's not. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm not gonna lie, Doc. I had a Chris. Uh, Luke doesn't understand this feeling yet because he doesn't have a kid. Maybe it's different when the doggy gets a little he girlfriend. A dog. But he has a dog. Yeah, dog. I picked. Yeah. I picked up. I picked up uh, my daughter from daycare yesterday, and two of the two of the boys that are a little bigger, like taller than her. They ramped to her and said, Belle, we want to give you a hug. And they both, like, fucking hugged her at the same time. I was like, yeah, I ain't ready for this shit. <laughs> I was, I bro, knocked some kids over a lot yesterday. Bro, no, that just – I picked up I picked up Sienna. And I don't get to pick her up much, right, because I, I work so far away. Um, so I was off. I was on base last week for something. I went and picked her up. Um, and this, this kid was, like, a foot and a half taller than her. And he comes up, like, bear hugs. And now, mind you, foot and a half taller. I mean, the, the kid's, like, two and a half feet tall, right, three feet tall. Yeah. Like, I about fucking – Boot kicked him across the floor like <laughs> NFL punt hang time. Like, yeah. get the fuck off my daughter, kid. Yeah, I was a little. I saw, I saw the kid. She was like, a fucking tree through, compared to her. But they sandwiched her. They hugged her. They picked her up, and I was like, all right, all right I'm about to have, have to hit a three or four year old because uh, yeah, I ain't ready for all. I ain't ready for all this, you know. <laughs> She's only three. I'm going to jail today, dude. Yeah, and, and Sienna yeah. just like tensed up and was like pushing and like get away from me now. And even teacher was like, she was right to do that. He was way too aggressive. And I was Start like, yeah, keep him away. Keep him the fuck away. But no, yeah, Luke, you understand one day, one day. No, I probably won't. Probably won't. Get snips in? No, I think, I think I'm good where I'm at, you know. I, I like enjoying my life. I, I like not having to get babysitters. It's pretty great. Do this. Do like, this. Monday night, I just went to a concert in Nashville. Guess what? Didn't need a babysitter. I just went. It was a great time. Get snips. I'm so far. I'm, I'm seven years in, and no, no accidents. So I think I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, it's true. Good. You are. You got a my, good. My you got a good track blinks, record. I don't know. I'm two for yeah. two. Yeah, you, my pullout game is be. non-existent. <laughs> I've got that feeling though that you and Wade won't hey, be having kids. I don't think pull, Wade wants any pull, either. Pull pull out legend over here. Yeah. No. I'm it fucking once I'm in a dude. That's it. Game over. <laughs> Uh, I'm thinking about right, proposing well, this to uh, Morning Wood. I'm thinking about TJ Hawkinson and Austin Eckler, and I'll give him Roshan Johnson and a 2024 <laughs> third round, a 2025 second round. It sounds like he doesn't want picks. He just wants players. No, he only wants – Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, he's trying to get rid of picks, yeah. But, Chris, did you offer that one for the um... – Everyone that's listening, we're talking. We're still talking yeah. fucking now, Dynasty. So, yeah, he never messaged me back, so I don't know. What were you looking? He might at? have to message a group. He might have to. He might have actually message the group or message him directly on a text message. He's maybe the app is Who not is the it? best, probably at messaging. Don't, don't worry about it, go. dude. Oh yeah, no, I that, I had the same thing. He wouldn't. Res- he didn't respond to me either. And then yeah, you got you got a text because the sleeper apps. I don't think is the best for communication. But hey, grab you going after a QB too? I have a QB too. No, are you going after a QB? I need a QB three. That's a, I meant QB comma two. All right. Oh yeah. yeah, Who, yeah who's yeah, yours? Yeah, who's I, need, yours I need I need a backup to the backup. Backup to the backup. There we go. I need a backup to the backup. Doc, know? who are you looking at? Who, who are you I, looking I, at for his role? I, I got Will Levis. If you're interested. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at Gino. <laughs> I, I know. I, I mean, I that. <laughs> But yeah. hey, you can have it's a fine. Baker. I won't overpay. I'm you not get overpaying. Baker. Hey, Baker's gonna get Baker ten for, wins this year. Yeah, Baker for a third. He, you know, he drafted all those quarterbacks, thinking that he's got he's got shit to sell. Like you can't play four quarterbacks, dude. I'm not gonna overpay <laughs> for one of your quarterbacks. But or they got QB that drafted all but, running backs. If you have a QB that goes down though, it's a different ball game now. You might be looking to <laughs> now pay. No, a I'll pick bit. up. I'll pick up their backup. I got waiver wire money. I put hundred dollars on that bitch. Same. <laughs> I waste all my, I waste all my money. 
<laughs> Does the waiver wire money not start till after week one? Also, so no, so redraft. Yeah, I, no, I, for sleeper. No, no, so no for sleeper. So the way that even like normal uh, ESP would work, waivers don't go like it's not a waiver unless someone drops him, and then you have a process like a day or whatever. Yeah, for, he's in the waiver period for a day. So right now, since they're all free agents, no one's dropped anyone. So whoever you drop, yeah, free agents you can yeah. just pick up. But it, if you drop someone tonight, and I went to go put a waiver, and I had to put like money down for him, and then whoever the highest bid is by a certain time, they they gather him up. So. And honestly, if I need a fucking starter, I'll I'll fucking go for Trey Lance because you ain't gonna get shit for Trey Lance anyways. Even if he becomes a starter in Dallas, and I have Lamar's backup, so like Luke said, Will Levis is there. He might be starting after. He might be starting this year. You never know. I, I have Will Levis. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, he might. And Trey Luke leads. Luke Dude, I'll give you a 2026 20, fifth yeah. fourth round pick. Make it make it a second. All right, I'll give you 2026. How many rounds are what? What are you doing in the next like fucking draft? How many rounds are we doing? Four. I have it set to four right now. I think four is a good four? number. I think they're. Oh, right, I'm not taking a four. You ain't gonna have forty. You ain't gonna have more than forty-eight rookies worth drafting. Yeah. It, it, it might well, go down to three. Well, it take, might go down to three rounds. Well, we can take free agents too, right? Yeah. So it's it. So what's gonna happen is if it's three or four, the rosters will yeah, get jumped up. Works. Three or four in the summer, it'll get jumped up to three or four slots extra. It'll draft your team, and then by a certain day, I'll I'll announce the day. It's a cut day, so you have to drop at least three or four players. Got to get down to the league minimum or league maximum fifty three. Yeah, well, for us, 20, for twenty-two. But yeah, but, you, but you hey, know boys, what I mean. you get what I'm saying. Great episode Monday. We will be covering NFL football. We'll be fucking previewing Week One, getting our predictions Fuck, in. Yeah. Can't Whoa. wait. I have an upset there already brewing. I have a one upset for sure. East Coast team being West Coast team. Favorite to win a Super Bowl will be losing Week One, but. That's all you're going to hear for right now. So, spoiler alert there. You'll have a fucking upset. Hey, I'm Mark Davis. Chris Kameinhart, good luck to your Tigers this week. Appreciate it. Nick Doc Skirkwinch, good luck to your Florida State Seminoles. Thank Luke, you, sir. Thank you. I, I'm not going to wish you luck because you guys are going to steamroll the fuck out of Kent State tomorrow. So, good yeah, job. Good night. Howdy, champs. Charge and on. Texas, Texas mm. will beat the shit out of Rice. So, Luke, we have some good warm-up games. We'll, we'll be we yep. fucking on our couches. Stay tuned for the LSU Florida State game. Can't wait. But this God is damn, all about the boss podcast. Competition this, this week. Yeah, we are. We are playing competition <laughs> this week. <laughs> Rice, Rice, Texas school, dude. We got they got some competition. Yeah, do you guys are hey, playing them in baseball? We might be talking something. And this is all about the boss podcast, and we are out. Thank you for checking out another episode of All About the Balls podcast. We want to thank all of our listeners and supporters of the Sack House. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at the Sack House.